Salem, Massachusetts has long been a place to take in scenic seaside views, a certain peace in the stillness. Though just beyond the ferry docks, you will find a different kind of view take flight, a place where scrap metal goes to find new life. I'm in the contracting business, so I generate a lot of broken tools and whatever. Do you throw anything out? Never. I'm a collector. Herb Mackey, now in his 10th decade of life, has spent much of the last 40 years collecting, bending, soldering this world of curious wonder. I don't play golf or nothing like that. It's just good therapy for me. The results are mind-bending. Some people are interested and other people aren't. It doesn't matter. Opinions don't add up to much here, but the gate, adorned with once stately, now weathered brass and copper, is always open. The entry fee free. You meet all kinds of good people. You will not see any of this metal art with a price tag, but somehow this slot is constantly full. I've had a little bit of money. I've never got a bad check. Never. Grandkids Ryan 10 and Reagan 7 are ready to represent the third generation of making stuff. They know this makeshift museum to all things rust, metal, and repurposed well. If you touch his head, it'll spin. If, if I touch the head, it will move? Yeah. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. Woo! But they still have some to learn. Mm. Have you ever counted how many things are back here? No, not really, actually. No? I should do that. And a great deal of maintenance ahead. He used to have a body, but he has to get welded back on. But both tell us they will preserve Grandpa's view as long as they can. Oh, I saw one of your pieces in the park. How did it get there? <laughs> it's an interesting question. Art sitting in the woods by the road in a yard. A unique collaboration is bringing an inspired scavenger hunt of sorts to Newton. You really have to know where this is or you have to just come across it. And that's the fun. A walk through the woods often reveals new perspective. And now a new unlikely home for Mary Beth Maisel's human sculptures. Linda loves sitting and being seen by other people. She was one of the most frequent models that we had. When Maisel decided to downsize her home, she worried about what might happen to the art she spent half a lifetime gaining the courage to mold and another half creating. I always wanted to do art and I was always told, no, you're not going to be very good, you'll never be able to make money. Finally, I decided I was going to become an artist. Maisel crafted well over 100 of these terracotta figures. Neighbor, Joan King, bought 20 of them. But where would King put them all? With art in particular, I feel like it's so sad if it gets lost or thrown away or just squirreled away in someone's attic or basement, right? Art is meant to be enjoyed. Art is meant to be experienced. We wanted them to be in public places, but we wanted to be in places that they looked like they belong. She decided to display the figures throughout the city for the public to enjoy. There was so much interest that three of them sold. The price? A donation to Pathways to Possible, a Newton-based organization that supports adults with cognitive disabilities to live independently. We did stop selling them because it became so popular we didn't want to take any out of the public domain. For this duo, it is about so much more than art and even supporting a local cause. It's about creating a safe space for all to enjoy. We're all looking for things to do right now in this weird world of COVID. The saying may be cliche, but the sentiment is true. Sometimes one person's trash is another person's treasure.